तो टूडेज टॉपिक वी विल बी डीलिंग विथ हाउ शैल स्टूडेंट्स और एनी यंग एडल्ट शैल मैनेज विथ स्ट्रेस what is stress according to you all if any pop ins that can come in on the screen before i start my presentation anybody who could just tell me in one or two lines or even one word would be okay tension okay a reason where our productivity decreases okay great lovely inability to deal with situation great anybody else okay so stress can be defined as any type of change that can cause physical emotional and psychological stress stress can be anything it could be academic stress it could be financial stress it could be even the small day to day tasks or any meetings that you have to attend even a small gathering also can cause a lot of stress to people and this can cause a lot of physical emotional and psychological stress when i talk about physical stress it's basically you know it starts weakening you as mentioned it decreases our productivity and when our productivity decreases automatically there can be you know so much of tension there can be so much of uh, uh, headache dizziness weakness in oneself emotional stress when i talk about it basically you know it changes the sudden shift in your mood you get angry you get irritated you get frustrated you become moody so all this becomes your emotional aspects and then comes your psychological strain or psychological aspect which has been drained because of the stress so this where basically it will be like you know it decreases your attention and concentration on the work that you need to do you start worrying about the problem about the stress all these things are certain things that can stress that a stress can cause you know stress can be anything and everything even a small minute thing also can cause a lot of stress as kishan sir said mentioned like you know this could have been a very stressful situation for somebody else but you know i managed it in a very calm way so every individual is different and when every individual deals with a problem in a different way so this is something where you know where stress can lead to a lot of type of changes that can cause physical emotional and psychological strain to oneself so next part is what are some of the signs of stress so first one is change in mood as mentioned earlier as soon as the individual tends to get stressed there is sudden shift in the mood the person tends to get angry moody they become very dull or they get very irritated so in the morning i had to do a one task so because i was a bit late for the particular task that i had to do Uh, there was sudden shift in my mood and people were able to identify okay why are you getting so irritated why are you you know getting angry you know because i am a person who does tasks everything on a very, on a particular time and it has to be on time otherwise you know it starts irritating me so there was sudden shift in my mood so one of the sign of stress is that this starts change changes in your mood second part is it decreases your sex drive so as soon as the person gets stressed there can be sudden uh, you know decrease in your sex drive or your interest in uh, having a physical contact and all these things because of tension also it decreases your sex drive next one is diarrhea so when there is stress automatically there are uh, you know individuals i have seen my clients coming and telling me because of stress you know i'm i'm feeling uh, like vomiting uh, you know my stomach is upset i'm not able to have good food and all these things so this can also be one of the sign of stress difficulty in sleeping as we always see that one of the first thing that happens when we experience stress is difficulty in sleeping you will have very abrupt sleeping patterns 
or uh, there will be irregular irregularity in your sleep either you know you sleep a lot or either you sleep very less it could be limited us so if you have to write an exam i have students coming with me we study the entire night ma'am so that you know uh, the stress comes uh, the be becomes less for us or we have to write an examination i'm not getting any sleep this is also because of the tension that the individual is having or uh, if you have to tomorrow your results are going to be out at 8 am in the morning and uh, because of this also there's so much of tension whether i will fail or whether i will pass will i be able to get the seat in this particular college all these things can also fall difficulty in sleeping so that is also one of the signs of stress digestive problems uh, some people tend to eat a lot and there are people who eat very less when they have tensions or stress in their life because of that you know they have, they tend to have digestive problems uh, next comes dizziness dizziness feeling anxious and all these are certain symptoms of anxiety that the individual has if you have to write an examination tomorrow uh, uh, especially ex exam anxiety is very common among the youth nowadays after especially after covid i have been see i have been seeing in individuals that um, they are very anxious anxiety panic attacks is very very common among the teens and the young adults that i'm see i'm seeing in the clinic in the clinic these days that they are very anxious in life for anything they you know they they have increased heart rate palpitation sweating and all these things so feeling dizzy feeling anxious frequently falling sick tomorrow i have a, a particular important task to be done okay you fall sick i have one kid at home uh my mate's uh, son whenever there is examination uh, i have got cold i have got cough why because he is worried because he is we're always tensed about the examination whether he will pass whether whether he will fail because of this he also tends to miss the examination so you frequently fall sick headache headache one thing decrease in abrupt sleeping patterns Uh, abrupt sleeping patterns even food intake also there is you can have mostly it is always low intake of uh, food because of this also and the tension and the pressures that you tend to have because of that also you tend to have develop headache low energy since there is no good appetite or there is no good sleeping patterns because of that also there is you know chances that your energy shall be low next one is muscle tension um most of the times we see that we have uh, individuals coming to the clinic uh with so much of pain in the body uh, it could be shoulder pain back pain they go to all uh, physicians you know general physicians they get all their scannings all specialists they go uh, they get all their scannings mris everything done right there's no problem in them uh the doctor says no there's nothing wrong what's the problem some then they you know we when they come to us we always in psychology we say that uh, whenever there is lot of tension whenever there is lot of pressures in one cell the tension and the pressure can transform into pain into our body can transform that particular tension or that particular uh, stress that we have in our life can transform into a physical pain in our body so during this process they go to doctors they go to all kinds of specialists but still there's no there's no there is no physical cause for the problem of of the pain that they are experience this is because of the psychological pain the tension and the stress that they have the psychological pain is transformed into a muscle tension or a pain in the body for this one of the best thing that we do in in psychology or in our therapy is something called as jpmr if you have heard about it is called as jacobson progressive muscle relaxation training where we uh, teach our clients to tense as well as relax their muscles each part of the body has been utilized in this particular technique from your head till your toe you know we practice jpmr so that you know the tension tends to get released and when we use this particular technique we see that most of the clients the physical pain that they have that they have been experiencing have been completely reduced so your stress and your tension that you are experiencing can also transform into a muscle tension or a physical pain in your body 
Next one is increased heart rate. When uh, we always see, uh, there is a meeting to attend or uh, there is an exam to attend or there is a business uh, call. There's so much of uh, increased uh, heart rate. We, we see very less people are very calm. Uh, no, uh, I was a very calm child, you know, if you ask my mother also for that reason, she'll tell, you know, she used to go to the exam hall in a very calm manner. I will tell that, you know, even marks will come and go, but, you know, being very stressful, spoiling one's own health for that reason, for any problem, we need to have the ability to face it. If you say that, you know, problems and problem, problems are only going to be in your life. So it's very, very important that, you know, we face the problem and uh, because of this also when there's so much of problem there can be increased heart rate there is increased palpitation sweating and all of these things so these are certain signs of stress that we experience in our life how do you identify your stress the next next part is first one is psychological signs Psychological signs could be first thing is you find it very difficult in concentrating. You are not able to concentrate on the tasks. You are unable to pay attention to what you want to do. You develop anxiety or uh, during that process of developing anxiety, there can be increased heart rate. There can be sweating. There can be palpitation. There can be choking sensation in the neck. Or you, you, you also term it as, you know, something called as panic attacks. Very, it's a very common term used by today's young population. Uh, panic attacks. I am developing panic attacks. Most of the young adults, they come and tell, ma'am, I'm having panic attack. Very commonly used term by young population and students is panic attack. So this is also, that's also related to the psychological aspect. You find it very difficult to concentrate. Your attention is totally absent. You are always absent-minded. You always keep worrying. You are unable to remember the day-to-day -day tasks and everything. I have seen individuals, even when individuals are seen watching a movie or a reality show, most of them are, you know, always thinking about the problem. They are not present in the present condition of their life. So these are all psychological signs that you see. You presently don't live in the present moment of your life. You are totally absent from the present condition of your life. This is something called a psychological sign. Next one is emotional signs when we talk about. For example, it can be being angry. You get irritated. You become moody. You become frustrated. So any conversation when there is when there is too much of workload also we see or when there is too much of workload automatically there is lot of automatically there is a lot of stress for the individual so when there is too much of workload also you see the person tends to get angry or the person gets you know irritated sometimes it does even happen with me when i have to conduct mental health uh, programs or any uh, psychological uh, related programs you know because most of the things I shall be handling. And uh, that time also, you know, I, I also tend to get irritated, you know, when people ask me too many questions and all of these things. You know, I also, you know, get irritated, angry and all of this is very common. But, you know, excess of this is something which is not really good for oneself. It cause it that can also cause a lot of stress. So especially what I do, one of my coping strategies that whenever I feel that the program is nearing, I make sure that I don't give my appointment those days so that I can fully be present in the program that has been conducted. So that, you know, I because I feel that when I deal with a client, I need to give justice to them. It is not the purpose of uh, just, uh, you know, spending 45 minutes to one hour with my client and uh, my mind is totally uh, in some other place. So I don't believe in that. So for me not to get emotionally stressed out, I make sure that, you know, on those particular days where the program has been nearing, two to three days, I don't give my appointment. I, I, I don't give my appointment those days so that, you know, I can totally be present in the uh, program, totally in that mindset. Next can be physically uh, physical signs. Physical signs such could be, especially when there's a lot of stress, there can be high blood pressure, there can be increase in your blood pressure, changes in your weight, 
most of them you know they tend to lose weight or they gain weight um because one of my uh, most of my clients i see that you know they usually gain weight because of the stress that they have uh because there are most of the individuals they try to eat a lot during that process they try to eat sugary uh, sugar items or anything that's really spicy so they try to they tend to eat a lot so this changes in your weight frequently developing a fever cold it can even be somato form also but uh, you know they tend to fall sick and in women there can be changes in your menstrual cycle automatically when there is and automatically when there is environmental changes or uh, when there is lot of stress we try to see that as women we experience shifts in our menstrual cycle there can be one there can be changes in the days of getting your menstrual cycle or you know it could be one month of your menstrual cycle can also be absent because of the stress and tension that we experience next one is behavioral signs very poor self care very important thing that we notice that when we experience lot of stress and tension in our life we tend to not take care of ourselves we are not bothered about how we appear in front of people it could be our clothing it could be you know how we appear it could be our hair style maybe you must be putting all iron clothes uh, from day one but since there's lot of stress you're wearing very shabby clothes you're not bothering about your appearance and everything not having time for the things that you used to really enjoy so automatically when stress comes in or when tension comes in we stop doing the activities that we really love it could be dancing it could be singing it could be you know doing anything and everything that makes you happy you stop doing it because you will be mostly thinking about the problem there is no time for us you know even to sit and relax of okay let me just put away my problem and let me just you know be there you know let me just uh, enjoy the thing that i used to do very rarely people do it people don't think about you know okay this this can also be a coping strategy for me to deal with my problem effectively so we stop doing the things that we actually do that helps us to enjoy oneself very commonly found among young adults young youth that to deal with the problem best part for them is to rely upon drugs and alcohol it is uh, it is an easy escapism so especially when i do counseling or when i do a therapy uh, when my client is in in a problem so they tell me ma'am uh, if i have uh, one puff or if i consume alcohol it helps me you know forget about my problem so i just tell them it's an instant gratification an instant relief but it is not a permanent solution for you when you have alcohol yes you may feel drowsy you may fall asleep or when you uh, take drugs uh, drugs you can be in the you can be on the moon or you in be you be in a high level of state where you know you're always you know either you be drowsy or when you consume other kinds of drugs you be in a high level or you always be on the moon so that is basically an instant relief from the problem but it is not a permanent solution for the problem so these can be behavioral changes that you find in individuals especially when they experience stress in life how do you cope with stress first one try to learn try to recognize the signs of burnout as mentioned as i have mentioned all of the things in the previous slides that those are certain signs or uh, those are certain uh, aspects or points that we need to remember like how do we identify the burnout what is actually taking out a lot of energy what is the thing that is causing really stress a lot of stress for us what do we what do we do about it is something that we need to consider so first one is try to recognize the sign of burnout try to get regular exercise very very important no matter how busy you are no matter how busy you are in your life it is very very important that we regularly exercise early in the morning i make sure even though i have a lot of patients to deal with i make sure at least one to one and a half hour i try to give it to myself because if i am able to take care of myself only then i shall be able to take care someone else 
So it's very, very important that we regularly exercise. Exercise, I don't mean that you need to go to the gym and you know carry weights and have do heavy workout. No, anything that could be a, it could be walking for half an hour, jogging, uh, yoga. It could be even meditation. Uh, it can also be dancing, Zumba, anything that is uh, you know helping you sweat. It's very, very important that you regularly exercise, no matter what we have in our life. At least try to give that one to two hours to oneself so that, you know, it regulates oneself. Take care of yourself. Stress shall come and go. But if we don't take care of ourselves, we shall find it very difficult to manage our problems in the future. Because when we don't take care of ourselves, automatically there is poor self-care. Automatically, we stop taking care of oneself. There is poor self-care. We don't take, take care about our physical appearances, our mental health, and our physical health. We tend to eat a lot. We try to gain weight because of the stress, or we try to eat less. There is decrease of appetite. We lose weight, and uh, we there is uh, abrupt sleeping patterns. And because of that, you know, whole night you're awake, there is the dark circles that tends to come around your eyes. There can be increased hair fall because of all these, you know, because of the stress, you may experience all of this. So it's very, very important that we take care of oneself. Practice mindfulness in your life. So can anyone in the group tell me what is mindfulness according to you? If you all know, you all can just let me know. What is mindfulness according to you all? Staying in the moment, very good. Okay, so mindfulness basically means that you actively try to be in the present moment of your life. Most of the people, they're always thinking about the past that's happened in their life or they're excessively worrying about the future that's going to happen. Nobody is focusing on living in the moment. If, even if we go for a cup of coffee in the cafe, we're always talking that has to be done. This has to be done. Oh, I did that. What shall I do with that? But nobody is thinking, okay, I'm in a cafe. Let me just enjoy the cup of coffee that I'm having. Very rarely, very handful of people try to do that. Even if you're having a good meal, we don't enjoy the good meal that has been given to us or which has been presented in front of us. They're always either cribbing about the past and always uh, thinking about the future in an excessive manner, which is totally not right as individuals we are doing. This can also cause a lot of stress. Thinking about the past that's happened in your life will only cause guilt and lot of more problems you call in for your life. There is no purpose of thinking about the past, but even excessively thinking about the future shall also not help you in any way. So try to live in the moment. What has happened has happened. You can't change it. We cannot rewind what has happened in our life. What is going to happen tomorrow is something that, you know, we, are not, we have not seen. We don't even know what's going to happen in the next five to ten minutes in our life. So why to worry about it? Why don't we present? We, why don't we fully function in the present moment and enjoy the present moment? If you go for a function, enjoy that. Have fun and come. You should not have the regret that, you know, I went over there. I did not have fun. I did not have, uh, you know, I met my friends, but I was not having a good conversation with them. You should not regret your, uh, you should not feel bad later on when you come back home and you should not regret for the moment that you had. So very, very important. Try to practice mindfulness in your life, which is very, very important. Especially, uh, you know, after COVID, I see in individuals that too much excessively worrying about the future. What do I do? Which college do I go? Yes, it is a thing. It is a part of life to think about. 
but excessively worrying about what shall happen tomorrow or what will turn out in your life is something that's totally not wrong that can also cause a lot of stress uh, especially um, these ma you know young mothers uh, where uh, you know they think too much where you know that can also you know cause a lot of stress you know we tell them leave it it's okay when time comes things shall happen it things shall fall into its place when time comes but excessively worrying taking too much stress about it can also cause a lot of other physical and psychological strain in your life so very very important that we try to fully function in the present moment of our life so certain techniques in simple terms if i have to talk about of how do you manage stress very very important solution focused coping so if you ask me what is solution focused coping is that you try to focus on the solution instead of focusing on the problem most of the individuals they always uh, talk uh, i have that problem in my life i have this problem in my life this is going to cause this is this is that this is this but nobody is going to talk about very rarely i see individuals talking about about the solution what do i do about it very rarely even when i sit for counseling uh, patients are just talking about problems problems problem but they are not thinking about you know okay if i do this this can be the solution for my problem for example in simple terms if i have to say you have scored less in your uh, science paper students are so worried parents are excessively more worried okay my child has scored less marks they try to shout at the child or uh, there is uh, you know they try to compare with other children this can also cause a lot of stress for the child okay my mother insulted me they she tried to have a comparison with my cousin or my friend this can also cause a lot of stress so instead of focusing on the problem that you have scored less why don't you focus on the solution what do you do okay if you have scored less in the paper what do you do for it you focus okay you have scored less okay you what you need to do okay i need to spend a little more extra time i need to sit and study my paper or i need to practice before in hand for the examination if there are long answers let me just you know make it short and make it brief make it brief and make it a short point so that i don't skip any answers in the examination so all these things are certain solutions that you can bring in for the problem so very very important i can tell you all that don't focus on the problem that's coming in your life when the problem comes in try to focus on the solution so there shall be less stress in the individual meditation very very important meditation or it could be even spending that 5 to 10 minutes with oneself as soon as you wake up early in the morning or in the morning when you get up try to spend that 5 to 10 minutes or even that 20 minutes that you can give yourself nowadays everybody gets up in the morning they will check their phone which message has come on whatsapp what has been available on social media what is there on instagram or they keep watching reels this is what basically most of us are doing instead of that try to spend that 5 to 10 minutes with yourself with the meditation uh you can do deep uh, breathing exercises as soon as you get up in the morning you can inhale uh you can you know find a peaceful and a comfortable place for you you can sit there for 5 to 10 minutes automatically you tend to get reduced so meditation is very very important next one is mindful practices as mentioned earlier as as mentioned as mentioned earlier act trying to actively be present in the present moment of your life which is very very important try to fully function in the present moment so in psychology uh, there are lot of mindful practices like uh, you know mindful waking up mindful uh, sitting uh, mindful walking mindful uh, having food all these things are see as i mentioned earlier even when the good food is presented in front of you you don't enjoy the meal you are either talking about the problem or what has to happen next this is what most of us are doing even if you are having meal okay tomorrow i have that meeting what do i do this that but very rarely we sit and appreciate the food that's available in front of us or anything that we are doing in the present moment we rarely appreciate it 
so it's very very important that we try to fully function in the present moment of our psychotherapy when you come in when we when our patients are experiencing a lot of stress and tension or any other problem we try to administer psychotherapy on the individual where um, in psychotherapy one of the best uh, therapy that we apply for stress is sit it's known as stress inoculation training where we inoculate our patients inoculation basically means that we we prepare or we precautionate our patients for the future problems that may experience for example i had a client who came to me uh, he was a clerk so covid hit there was a decrease in salary and then he lost his job so he had a small baby at home a girl baby at home and uh, during that period of life during the pandemic you know children used to tend to fall sick often and he had no savings also he used to just blow up the money that uh, he used to have so what happened was he blew he almost blew up all the money that he had and uh, he was because of that he was he had to pay home uh, he had to pay rent he had to pay all the electric water bill and all of these things so because of that he was experiencing a lot of stress so when he came in for the therapy the best thing that i thought that i could do for my client is sit stress inoculation training basically i'm inoculating or preparing my client for or precautioning my client for the future problems that they can they are preparing how to deal with the problem is something that we teach our client so in sit basically we have three major goals one is immediate goal second one is short term goal and third one is long term third one is long term goal that my that we have to do in sit so uh, immediate goal is something that my client needs to achieve within 2 to 3 days okay and uh, short term goal is a goal that my client needs to complete within one week and a long term goal is something that my client can achieve within 3 to 4 months so the immediate goal that i told my client is that when i did the counseling and when i was talking to my client i realized that he stays in a rented place so the owner of the rented place was very sweet she was very calm and she is a very helpful nature so i asked the, uh, my client that uh, just you know i told him that if you could just ask for some amount of money as loan so that you know you could pay your certain bills and you could you know treat your child for a moment so when he went back and when he tried this with the owner the owner was very nice she was very sweet and uh, she also lended him certain amount of money as a form of loan so his first goal was completely achieved because of this because he was very much worried because the daughter's health was you know she was not feeling well and corona the first pandemic you can imagine how the situation was so he was able to take his child to the hospital and treat the child effectively so it was a very he was very best when he came for the second session he had informed me that you know my owner did you know help me so the stress has come a little low so the second short term goal that i applied on my client was i told him that you can inform your friends for another job that you can't sit at home just like that you have to do something to feed your family as well as take care of your child so i told him that try to inform your friends very good friends to find a job so the second goal that he had that i told him he administered it within one week within one to two weeks he was able to find a job which was totally out of his profession but something that he could do to earn a little bit of money so that there could be less stress the third goal that i wanted my client to achieve was that i made him realize that it's very important to have savings in life even we as individuals also it's important that you know we save little bit of amount of money i didn't tell him that you need to save large amounts of money but i informed him that i informed him that it's very very important that you save at least 1/4 of the money that you earn so i told him every month try to put 1000 rupees in your account so that by the year end it becomes 12000 rupees and it becomes a saving for you when there is emergency you can always take it out so this is what i informed my client to do and he told he was 
he happily administered all the things that he did and this is what we basically do in sit we are preparing we are inoculating our patients our clients for the future problems or the problems that they have come across next one is medications when when a patient comes in to us and when we feel that our client is finding it very difficult to manage with the problems we refer our patient to a psychiatrist and uh, the psychiatrist shall medicate the patient with either with anti anxiety tablets or if there is any uh, sleep uh, ab uh, sleeping patterns has been abrupt or anything like that the there can be other types of medication that can also be given to the client so that the client is able to manage with the stress effectively so very very important especially in psychology or in psychiatry that we need to understand that psychiatry medication as well as counseling goes hand in hand now it's not so easy for an individual just to deal with medication or just to deal with counseling. there are certain problems that can totally be uh, totally be helped with counseling there can be certain problem that can totally be dealt with uh, medication medication but there are certain uh, problems or certain conditions which both needs to go hand in hand so it is a process it's a both hand in hand process both psychiatry and psychology goes hand in hand so it's very very important that you know if if you're taking medications it's important that we also uh, come in for counseling because medicines shall help the neurotransmitters that is there in your brain that shall transform and modi modify your um, uh, neurotransmitters that's present in the so brain chemicals that's present counseling we shall help you to practice and learn new strategies new coping uh, techniques for the life so that you shall be able to deal with the problem effectively any doubt any clarification you can ask me can i stop sharing uh, ma'am would you like to take a few doubts yeah sure do let me know okay ma'am um, <laughs> the participants on this group can put in some of their doubts in the chat box or um, you can unmute yourself Um, ma'am, there are a few doubts. Um, how to recognize the signs of burnout? Okay, how do you recognize? As I mentioned earlier in the uh, starting uh, second slide, that uh, you know certain uh, signs, you know that you basically have there is sudden shift changes in your mood, or you can have increased palpitation, or uh, there can be changes uh, in your food pattern. All these are signs of burnout that you experience in the. Uh, process of stress so these are certain things you know it can it is some of the signs that okay i'm experiencing this so you should you should be able to recognize the problem that you experience in your life so because of the because of the stress and the problem that you're experiencing these can be the signs of the burnout like you know you're not doing well in the things that you were doing it happens even in our work life also that you know when there is when there are certain problems that comes into us our productivity automatically reduces kriti i hope that that answered your doubt and we have another doubt on uh, youtube and uh, yeah tell me uh sai your voice is not clear hello हेलो 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 एम आई ऑडिबल हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल यस 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 देयर वाज लॉस ऑफ कनेक्टिविटी प्रोबेब्ली या या सॉरी मैम आई एम शायद फ्रॉम YouTube वांट्स टू आस्क हाउ टू मैनेज एंजाइटी ड्यूरिंग प्रोफेशनल एग्जाम्स हाउ टू मैनेज एंजाइटी 
very very important that we need to understand that what is actually causing anxiety for you either it is uh, whether it is the exam or whether appearing to the exam or uh, these two things is certain thing that you need to recognize whether it is your preparation or whether it is going to the exam hall there they, i have seen individuals they prepare really well for the exam but as soon as they enter the exam hall they forget everything that is because they have exam anxiety another one thing is that they prepare they do not prepare really well because of this also it can cause anxiety so first two things that you need to do is you need to identify what is actually causing anxiety and certain things that i can suggest you what you can do for anxiety is that try to you know do certain uh, uh, breathing exercises try to find a calm and a comfortable uh, place for yourself first thing and after that what you can do is that you know you can do some meditation for yourself uh, you can do some inhaling uh, then uh, you can also have something called as uh, object uh, observation for 5 minutes where you try to find what is making the object very unique and uh, you can also you also have 5 4 3 2 technique 5 5 4 3 2 1 technique that is also one of the best uh, stress management technique that we can uh, practice so these are certain techniques simple techniques that you can do for yourself and even if that is not possible i would i would suggest you that you know try to prepare really well for the examination one thing uh, try to shut down if there are too many large items for you to study try to break it down into smaller concepts and uh, try to prepare before in hand one thing i would suggest all the students that you know before why it's very important that we pre prepare for the examination one month prior so as we know now it's also me social media and soft copies keep uh, coming in so try to you know separate the concepts that you have if you're having science biology chemistry physics try to separate it make it make a word file out of it take print outs of it highlight it re go through it highlight it before in hand and try to give time for each subject so that within a uh, 10 days if you're giving for science within 3 3 days try to finish all the three sub sub subjects that you have so that it's not that you know in the when the exam one uh, one day before you try to open and read, it's not going to help you in any way it's going to cause a lot of stress so one suggestion that i could give all the students population is that try to prepare before in hand really well don't mug up anything try to understand the concept understanding is very important and try to understand it in simple way people basically think that if you write a huge huge uh, very comprehensive words we tend to get good marks or high marks no even the evaluator that's present in front of you just wants to understand whether you have understood the concept because of this also you can gain good marks and you can score really well so very very important try to prepare very effectively for the examination any other doubts thank you ma'am there's one more doubt um hmm. there's a person with social anxiety and she's wondering how to get over social anxiety because it is hindering her ability to complete the tasks that she's already committed to do okay so social anxiety as mentioned that you know uh people find it uh, in uh, people find it very difficult to socialize they have stage fear they find it very difficult to make even initial steps of conversations that could be maintaining an eye contact saying hi hello good morning even a handshake even their body language and postures tend to be not so effective comparatively to people who are uh, you know basically socialized so how do you deal with it first thing uh, that uh, we need to understand is that you know we say we have something called a social skills training in psychology where we have three major concepts that we need to understand the social behavior social social perception and social cognition first thing is that you know social cognition is where basically you when you have a you have to if you have to make friends with somebody is basically a cognition it comes in your mind so you need to prepare your mind depending upon the preparation 
uh, you after you see the you basically you know understand the situation and uh, you prepare it and then you actually give out your behavior so dealing with social anxiety it's very important i would suggest you try to get a uh, social skills training or uh, it could be even soft skill training would also help you to deal with your social anxiety where social skills training is very, very effective because in the therapy session we help you to understand how to understand the situation how do you pursue it and what is the social behavior that you can give one small example if i have to tell you i don't know if you all remember that happened two years back uh, where uh, doctors from dharwad or uh, somewhere the 12 to 13 doctors from the, they, they were traveling to goa a real life incident uh, and uh, there was a very massive road accident uh, and almost most of them uh, died in the accident so what happened was i just showed it to one of the child in my house so all their pictures of the accident had uh, arrived and uh, in on my mobile phone and i just showed it to the kid the kid just laughed out he when i asked him why did you laugh seeing that he said i found it funny so any common man when they see that you know their whole body has been physically damaged and everything it's not funny you feel very bad there's so much of you there's so much of pain he just told me he found it very funny seeing them like that so basically the child did not understand neither he pursued the situation in the right way and the behavior that he gave for the situation was not very good it did not it was not very apt so in social skills training what do we do to our clients is that we help them understand the situation depending upon the situation we help them you know pursue the situation in a right way and depending upon the perception we help them learn and help them teach them to give a proper uh, social behavior for it so best suggestion is try to get the social skills training or a soft skill training as soon as possible from the nearest psychologist available to you any other doubt